Introduction to Digital Photography Basic DSLR Settings The Back of the Camera When we move to the back of the camera, we will find it much easier to figure out what we are looking at, due to the fact that many of the names are self-explanatory. When I first began photography, that was the first thing that surprised me. These functions are typically used for menu navigation and playback. Playback can be looking at photography or it can be watching video that you have shot. As always, let's start at the top. The menu button will bring up the camera's menu. Here, we can change the image quality, picture ratio, our autofocus settings and plenty of other options. Our diopter adjustment lets us focus our viewfinder. My first camera, I remember being really confused when everything looked out of focus when I looked into the eyepiece, even when autofocus was turned on. Of course, the issue was with the diopter adjustment and not the lens. If you play around with it, you'll see the image in the viewfinder becoming sharp. Moving on, we have the info button. This is very handy when working on your DSLR because when you press this button during image playback, it can display metadata, a histogram, and some other important information about the photograph on our LCD screen. You will begin to use the autofocus or auto exposure lock after you've begun to feel comfortable with the camera. When this button is held while using autofocus and auto exposure, those two settings will lock. So, if I change the frame or move the camera to another position, the pictures that I take will remain focused and correctly exposed. The image playback button allows you to review your images and videos on the LCD screen. Next, we have the I button. This I button is reserved for the Nikon brand. Other manufacturers will have a similar button, which is commonly labeled with a Q. The Q stands for Quick Menu. This button will show you a set of functions on the camera's LCD screen, and these can be controlled directly. You will use this when you need to manage adjustments such as ISO, white balance, and the drive mode settings. The OK button is a simple button that is used primarily for selecting menu items. It's also useful for centering the active focus point and if you've enabled single point autofocus. The multi-selector wheel is unique in that it's called other names by other manufacturers. It functions as a four-way controller or wheel. It's used most commonly for navigation, but some manufacturers will integrate shooting functions to each direction. On the wheel, you can also sometimes use it to shift the active focus point in single point autofocus mode, although this depends on the brand, as some manufacturers will have a separate, dedicated control for this feature. The magnify button sometimes causes confusion. A lot of photographers will call it magnify rather than zoom, because this button is not concerned with zooming the camera lens. This button is actually used for magnifying or zooming in on an image during playback. This can ensure that you can see more detail and to ensure that the camera was focused where you intended. There are also cameras that allow you to use this button to magnify a live view image. The delete button is denoted by a universal trash can icon. So it is the most identifiable button on a camera. If you press this button, it will allow you to delete a photo from your memory card during image playback. No matter which camera you use, you will have to press this button twice or another button such as OK, just so you can confirm your decision. This prevents you from mistakenly deleting your work. The demagnify button works the way the magnify button does. This is the opposite of the magnify button, 
but this button will also let you create a bigger view that can also show multiple image thumbnails at once. Some current cameras will allow you to expand even further, which opens up folder or calendar views. Modern memory cards can hold thousands and thousands of pictures. So this feature is handy when you need to move quickly through your image library. In our example, the Nikon has a question mark beside the magnifying glass symbol. This button performs a double function as the help button. This is useful as you can receive tips in relation to a particular menu function. So, what have we learned in this lesson? This overview has given you a clearer understanding of how the controls work on a DSLR. It's very likely that you might only use some of the controls that we have went through, as they are not all a requirement when you want to take a photograph. Being comfortable with the mode dial, command dial and shutter release will set you up very well.